What's up guys? My name is Philip Thomas. I am a photographer and here on this channel I talk about things like photography for example, but as well as traveling and how those two kind of relate to each other. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as go ahead and just ding the bell if you don't want to miss any videos. And today here on this video, I'm going to be talking about what I just generally would bring on a typical photography trip. So let's get to it. And um, before I get into any of the gear, I just want to start by saying that you don't need any of this stuff to be able to travel and um, take the photos that you want to take and go see the things that you want to see. I personally, just over the last couple of years, have wanted um, better quality. Um, so I have started accumulating these things to help me capture the things that I want to capture just in a better way. Um, so feel free to continue to travel and go on these trips and just use your phone. Um, phones now are great. They better, they're better than they've ever been before and they take great pictures. So don't feel like you have to go out and buy this gear um, to be able to go do that because you absolutely do not. Um, but first things first, um, to take these pictures, you need some sort of camera. Um, like I said, you can use your phone if you like. Um, but for me, I have my camera. Uh, it's a Nikon D7200. Um, this isn't going to be so much of a review, but just as kind of a list of the things um, that I would like to bring. Um, I will say, however, that uh, if you want to shoot things like stars or fast moving subjects like wildlife, it's definitely going to help you to get a dedicated camera uh, for that purpose. And along with that camera, you are going to need lenses. Um, lenses basically allow the camera to see and you use those lenses to kind of create with that. So first, um, I have a wide angle lens and um, this is basically my main two lens, my main go-to lens as uh, a landscape photographer to be able to capture these big uh, broad uh, scenes. Uh, this one in particular is the 17 to 50 uh, 2.8 Sigma lens. And like I said, I use that to capture uh, most of my lamps landscapes. And secondly, I would recommend getting some sort of telephoto lens. This is um, just a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Um, I use this lens for um, some of those close-up detail shots of uh, mountains and also um, birds and animals and things like that that are a little bit closer to me. Uh, this gives you a nice little second element shot so uh, everything isn't just so wide all the time. It gives you a little bit more diversity in your photos. and. The third and last lens that I bring with me is this 150 uh, to 600 Tamron lens. And that is my go-to wildlife lens. Um, I don't hike with that lens very much uh, just because it's a little big and heavy. It kind of stays in my car when I travel. But those three lenses are really all I ever bring when I travel just because I like to uh, travel light, be able to travel fast, and it just makes hiking, which is something I like to do uh, when I do photography trips, uh, it makes it a lot easier to not have your bag weighed down with a lot of stuff. And now, so I also just recently started this YouTube channel and started vlogging and I have since switched to the Canon M50, which I'm filming on now. But for the last uh, few months before that, I was just doing everything on a GoPro. This is the GoPro Hero 6. Um, works great, does time lapses, records all the video that I could ever need it to record. And now, the more serious um, that you get into photography, you're going to realize certain situations um, with low light. If you really want the best quality, I strongly suggest getting some sort of tripod. 
and I mean there's nothing fancy about them but really what they do is they just steady your camera so that in situations like at sunrise or sunset or night photography when the lights really low you can still um, get those shots without um, bumping your ISO and introducing a lot of noise into your photos um, I also have a smaller tripod that I use um, along with my GoPro um, just two different gorilla pods that um, just kind of I can put anywhere I want to super versatile and really easy to use and I like those a lot and another thing that I like to bring with me is uh, some filters. Filters help you um, control light, basically. And for me, I only ever travel with three filters. And like I said, um, these are all just to help me control light. And I only bring three because, one, I only have three. And two, because uh, it just, again, lighter is better when you're traveling. And what I've found works for me best over the years is, um, first I have a circular polarizer and a four stop neutral density filter and a 10 stop neutral density filter. Um, the polarizer does a great job of um, giving you more color saturation and the neutral density filters are to help you slow your shutter speeds down so you can do some more creative things with clouds and waterfalls. Um, also kind of a less common thing is a shutter release cable. This thing is super helpful if you want to do long exposures at night or anything that or any exposure that goes longer than 30 seconds you'll need a shutter release cable. Super handy. And now, um, having all of this gear when you travel would be a little pointless if it got dirty and you didn't have a way to clean it. So I strongly suggest um, some sort of microfiber towel or um, these alcohol cleaning wipes. They're super, help super light, super helpful. So if your gear gets dirty while you're traveling, you can just clean it and it's gonna work perfectly. And also you have a lot of these electronics so you're gonna need a way to charge them when you're on the road uh, I'm on the road for usually a week at a time so uh, one of the ways that I do that is I plug into my car when I'm driving um, but also I have these charging brakes and um, these work great um, you charge them before you leave obviously but you can also recharge them while you're driving so that when you're hiking or sleeping, you can continue to charge your gear so that they keep working. Um, but along with that, I just bring extra batteries for everything. Um, always be charging, pretty much. Anytime you have downtime, you wanna be charging because you don't wanna run into a situation where you're trying to shoot a, a sunrise or something and your camera dies and you don't have any more battery. Um, and really, I think that is about it. Uh, like I said, I don't really like to travel with a whole lot of stuff. It just makes everything a little bit more clunky and cumbersome for me. Um, the last thing I guess is that now that you have all this gear, you need something to put it in. So having a dedicated camera bag is a necessity really. I'm um, kind of overlooked, but I think it's really important to have a safe and comfortable way to carry all of your gear. Um, and like I said at the beginning of this video, that this isn't really so much a, a review, but just kind of a list of what I um, bring with me. If you're interested in some of the specs or anything like that, go ahead and um, go down into the video description and there's links. Um, to my full gear list as well as everything that was in this video um, down below if you want to look at prices or weights or heights of tripods or anything like that. So if you have any comments or questions go ahead and leave them down below in the comment section and I'm curious what are some things that you bring when you travel what are some of those must to photography items that you would never leave home without I would love to hear it 
And thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Bye.